Hi guys, so I'm really loving this easy way of painting figures and as you can see this is now my sixth kill team that I've got and yeah I'm painting them all in the same manner which is really quick and easy but obviously first thing we need to do is well get the figures assembled so we can then paint them afterwards. So this is the Kroots kill team which came with the Into the Dark, uh, Gallo Dark sort of set. Um, so yes yeah, so obviously I'm looking through making sure I assemble the, the correct figures that I need to make up well a good kill team. So yeah using the instructions obviously starting with uh, well I'm gonna go with a boss and like most of the things with the kill team there's obviously two sort of alternatives you can uh, you can build. Um, you can obviously look through model specs to see which ones of the guns is best uh, but in this case I like to go with the one that I like the look of uh, but obviously if the other gun is better then well maybe I'll change the gun out. Uh, so there's one done and then it's just a case of well simply repeating the process cutting all the parts out, gluing them all together, um, yeah, and then getting them ready for the easy steps of painting. Some of the parts do need a little clean up. Uh, this is generally where they've been attached to the sprue, um, and obviously when you cut them, there's a little bit sort of left over, the old nibbly knobbly bits. So yeah, easily file them down with the, uh, with the scalpel there, because obviously mine's quite blunt, and a bit of glue, so I'm still using the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, just because I like using it on the brush. And yeah, there we go. So there's all the figures, all assembled, all ready for the next stage. What I like to do with them is glue them onto a bit of cork, uh, mainly because I like to sort of batch process paint, um, just because obviously it makes things a lot quicker and simpler. Uh, while you're using one sort of colour paint, well, basically do it on all the figures all at once. So that's why I use the cork, just so I can have all the figures all ready uh, for the painting. So yeah, a little bit of glue at the bottom. Um, but don't worry, these do come off these corks really easy and well, you'll see that in a second because I have a little change of mind on how I want to hold these uh, these chaps to paint them. But uh, yeah, a little dub of glue goes on, but say, they do come off very easy. So the first step in this easy three part step painting process is to prime everything in black, which is what I've done here. Uh, but then I had a change of mind in, well, in using these corks, which I've been using for, well, almost forever. Um, yeah, so rather than using the corks to have the figures on, I thought I'd have to go 3D printing, just some basic sort of holders, uh, which is what I did. So this is what I say, it's easy to pull these little suckers off, um, and then yeah, glue them onto my new little uh, little holders. So very simple, 3D printed um, at a very low resolution, just because, uh, well, I didn't need to spend long printing these things off. Um, and yeah, just a case of simply gluing the things back on. So as I said, uh, the first obviously step in this easy three part uh, print, uh, painting process is to prime everything in black. And then once that's done, we go over and we do some dry brushing with, well, any kind of grey that you've got, I guess. Um, obviously relatively a lightish grey probably works best for this. And yeah, it is just a simple case of going around dry brushing all over the bits. Um, obviously the reason for this is this will hit all the uh, the high points uh, and leave all the uh, the recesses nice and dark, uh, which is pretty cool. While I carry on doing the dry brushing, I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for helping sponsor the channel, as well as obviously all my sponsors for helping me, well, to continue to buy more and more bits and pieces that I kind of need. If you want to become a patron and help support the channel, there is a link down below and there will be a link at the end of the video. Also, the patrons get early access to sort of see what I'm currently working on, as I like to sort of post pictures and ideas and thoughts of, yeah, everything I'm working on over there. So, yeah, go check that out, guys. So, obviously, with the dry brushing, uh, we dry brush, obviously, the grey everywhere. Uh, by the time we get round to doing all of them, it's nice and dry. Um, and then I just go over a little bit of white and do some dry brushing with that as well. And with the white, I generally do a sort of a, a lighter sort of dry brushing. So I really do just capture, well, again, the very sort of highlighted edges. Um, sometimes, obviously, again, depending on how you want to paint, the certain areas that I do obviously apply a bit more white than others. Um, but yeah, it's all like a, an individual preference sort of bit, this, uh, as to obviously how you want them to look. So some of it is kind of trial and error when you first have a go at doing this, to just how sort of light you want uh, the dry brushing to be, uh, or how sort of thick or, well, whatever you want it to be. So yeah, I mean, I've kind of got mine down. So this is the sixth kill team I've now painted. Uh, and I am now sort of getting into a nice routine habit of painting them this way. 
uh, just because it is quicker, it's fun, it's easy, and to say the end results are, well, much better than I could achieve doing any kind of, well, other kind of painting. Okay, so that's them all done and finished and ready for the final step. But as I'm going to batch paint them, what I'd like to do first is obviously paint one fully, just to make sure I am happy with my colour choices. Obviously, the last thing you want to do is batch paint loads of these and then think, oh, I, think, I don't like the look of the skin or the cloak or something. Uh, because obviously, if you do it with just one of them, if you end up not liking it, you can just change it. So I've used contrast paints and speed paints in the past, but obviously there's a new person out there doing them, and that is good old Green Stuff World, and they're dipping inks, which are, well, similar in nature to contrast and speed paints. So that's exactly what I'm going to be using here, the, uh, the Green Stuff ones. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a brown um, to use, so obviously I'm using the speed paint one. Um, so yeah, so guys, whatever I do paint now on, I am going to try and include all the paints that I use in my sort of colour scheme. Um, only because this has been asked of me a few times, and yeah, so I am now going to try and include every single paint that I use uh, for my, my particular sort of kill team colours. Okay, so as you may have realised, the uh, the third and final step to the, uh, the three sort of easy steps of painting um, is to apply the contrast or the speed paints, or in this case, the dipping inks. Um, and yeah, it really is as simple as that. And so that's why I love this sort of painting scheme now, as it is so simple, so easy, but so effective. So this technique does go by several names. Obviously, more, most recently, uh, you may have heard it being called Slap Chop, uh, but obviously it's also called Underpainting. And obviously the oldest term that i found so far, um, again, I'm going to say this probably wrong, is Grisale. Um, if you go and look it up, it's a very old term, and basically it was the old painters used to paint uh, in sort of black and white, or shades of grey, uh, before adding colour. So this sort of technique has been around hundreds of years, and I'm sure there's probably loads of other sort of names that this may well be called. So yeah, let me know in the description guys, if uh, you know any other names for this sort of painting technique, uh, and whether or not you try this paint painting technique. Um, I say, at the moment it certainly is my go-to as it is so nice, so simple, and it works really well with the batch painting as well, obviously because I'm doing the same thing to one and then going around doing it to all of them. And the great thing with this is by the time I do, say in this case I'm going to do all the blue uh, on this chap, and then I'll do all the blue on the next one, and then the next one, and so on. And by the time I get back around to the, uh, the first one, that paint's nice and dry, and I can then just go on and do the next colour. So yeah, batch painting really is nice and easy. So this is my first time of using the Green Stuff World Dippin' Inks. And yeah, yeah, I like them. They're really good. Um, like most of the other sort of contrast paints, uh, you can obviously build up the colours by putting on several layers. So this is an orange I'm currently putting on. Uh, but in this case, it's come out more sort of like a leathery brown, uh, which I really like. Obviously, if I did another sort of layer or two, then it would look more orangey. Uh, but again, for my preference, I kind of like how it's, how it's looking, how it's come out. Um, and yeah, same with the purple. The purple's gone on really well. So obviously there are some things that I can't do the um, sort of the dipping inks on, and that's obviously the metal. So what I normally do with the metal is I use the silver that I've got, and I mix it with quite a bit of water just so it's nice and sort of well translucent. So again, when I sort of paint it over, you can still see some of the uh, the highlights and the shadows from uh, well whatever's under underneath. Um, and yeah, again, I, I can't really say it's enough. Batch painting is so much quicker and easier. Um, and generally, I can get a kill team done, I don't know, two, three hours-ish, um, which is pretty good, good going. So yeah, it's nice and quick to get that sort of kill team done. Um, obviously, all look in the same sort of uniform, same colours, and all the rest of it. So yeah, once everything is sort of basically there, um, obviously the skulls just need a little bit of a, a cream colour. Again, there's, there's obviously not all colours I have um, in the dipping inks or speed paints on contrast paints. So some paints I do sort of put on, well, normally. Uh, but then once I have put them on, I can then just go around and add a wash. Uh, one of my favourite washes is just like a mild brown one. Um, and yeah, just put that on. Again, for me, I don't like things looking too sort of neat and sort of clean looking. So the, uh, the washes obviously help dirty things up, make them look a little bit more natural and weathered. Um, yeah, so any of the silver or any sort of the block colours that I've put on, 
uh, also the beaks and the rest of it. Yeah, good old bit of wash. Um, yeah, job done. So I was saying earlier about the dipping inks, uh, how much I liked the orange and the purple. They come out really well. And the red, by using their hair. Um, then what didn't come out too good was the blue. And as you can see, it's almost come out like a block colour. Um, it wasn't very translucent. I'm not sure if this is because I didn't sort of shake it enough. Um, but yeah, basically it was almost like a block blue and it kind of lost all the, um, all the shading and the highlights that are underneath. So as you can see, a uh, quick remedy to all this. I'm using a wash, but it's a blue wash. Uh, and yeah, this, this went over really nice, really easy. And again, with like all washes, they obviously sink into the recesses and sort of pool up and leave darker shades. Um, and yeah, I was pleased with how the blue wash sort of turned out. So I say, it might have just been me being unlucky with the, um, the blue dip and ink. I'm not too sure. But either way, I got there in the end and very happy with the result. So yeah, these chaps obviously come off nice and easy. Um, yeah, just in case of scraping the, uh, the blade over the, uh, the metal disc that's on the, uh, these little paint holders. Um, and yeah, these chaps just pop off nice and easy. Uh, a little bit of glue was obviously on there, but um, yeah, they come off really, really good. So what I do do though, um, so they do come off well, but sometimes there's bits of paint or even maybe bits of glue still stuck underneath. Um, then it's just a case of sanding them bits off. So as you all know, I like to use clear bases, just because obviously I like to be able to see the terrain underneath the figures. And I get all my clear bases from Fluid 3D Workshop, a company in the UK. I'll leave a link in the description, guys. Go check them out. Obviously, there are a whole variety of uh, bases, um, different sizes, different thicknesses, uh, obviously square ones, round ones, rectangular ones, basically all kinds of uh, different bases. So obviously, these come on a, um, like a printed sheet. So there's a couple of little, uh, well, nibbly knobbly bits on there, um, but I'm using very fine sandpaper. And it takes like a few passes just to sort of get them bits off. And then, yeah, they're good, good to go. So they've obviously got obviously the clean or protective film over the top. And yeah, it's just a case of, well, peeling that back to reveal a lovely clear disc. So I say they do a variety of sizes. So that's Fluid 3D Workshop in the UK. So if you're after sort of clear bases, go check them out. But they also do your normal sort of black bases as well. So yeah, definitely go and check them out, guys. And that's just a case of doing the same for all the bases. Say so they just pop off really easy, a little bit of light sanding, um, and then just a case of obviously getting rid of the clear film or protective film even, and gluing them all down. And there we go. That's the Crute Kill Team, uh, all painted in about three hours, uh, in three lovely easy steps. And yeah, I think you have to agree, guys, the, uh, the outcome isn't too bad. I say, I'm not the best painter. Um, I'm certainly not a fast painter. Uh, but to be able to get sort of a kill team done in about three hours to a standard that, well, I certainly like, um, isn't too bad. So yeah, three nice and easy steps to, uh, to paint. Um, yeah, really well. So yeah, I must admit, contrast paints, dipping inks, speed paints, uh, absolutely love them. So in this case, obviously using the Green Stuff World at Dippin' Inks. Go check them out, guys. Um, I think they have a full range of about 24 colours at the moment. Uh, I'm sure eventually they'll probably bring out some more. Uh, but the other good thing with the Green Stuff World that I didn't actually mention is the bottles are three times the size of the contrast paints, uh, but cost about the same. So yeah, awesome value for money. So there will be links in the description of obviously where you can get the Green Stuff World Dippin' Inks from. Um, as well as obviously these lovely clear bases, so go check them out. Um, I am also a, an affiliate with Amazon, guys. So if you do shop with them, if you click on my link first, um, the only difference you'll find is, well, there is no difference, you won't find any difference. Uh, but obviously every time you buy something, I get a couple of pennies, which obviously helps me out and doesn't cost you a penny. Anyway, guys, that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. hope you enjoyed these guys. Don't forget to leave, uh, leave a like, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you thought of these and what you'd like to see me do in the future. And yeah, that's about it guys. Take care. Bye for now.